It's Declan here and I thought I'd just do a quick video to answer a question that is coming um, from one of the group members. This is from Natasha and uh, it's quite a long question, I'll just read it out to you. Uh, it says, I was classically trained from age 8 to 17 but after school I gave up as classical is not something I'm passionate about. I've tried taking it back up over the years, but learning reading sheet music again after all these years puts me off. Now my eight-year-old wants to learn piano, and I'd love to be able to teach her how to play by ear and play songs she loves rather than play from a sheet. I guess my question is, if she learns this way and decided to take up music in school, will it confuse her more when she has to read music? Or is she better learning to read sheet music and then expand her skill set with these tutorials? So I think that wins the prize for the longest question <laughs> I've had so far. Um, but it's a very good point. So effectively, uh, what I understand from that question is, are you better learning to play by ear first? And will that limit your choices of learning how to cite uh, to read sheet music later or are you better learning how to read notation um, your musical sheet music uh, before you start learning to play by ear so like many things there is uh, there's different sides to the question um, it's not a black and white answer my own view I learned how to read notation as a child so uh, in a similar way I did I did classical music on the exams, um, but I found that because the type of music I wanted to play was popular music that I wanted to play at parties and to my friends and play in pop groups, uh, I didn't find the notation very useful because I found that learning how to play by ear and play with chords and improvise was a much more useful skill for what I wanted. So what I would say is try to be very clear on what your priority is. If it is to pass examinations or to play complicated classical music, then I'd say notation probably is the best route if that is your objective. If your objective is to have fun, learn very quickly, um, be able to play any song and not need the sheet music, or to be able to play from things like chord sheets, which are available online and there's lots of free um, resources out there. So if you just want to go on your phone instantly, get some chord sheets, say at a party and be able to sit down and then play for people, then I would say playing by ear is a more useful skill. Now they're not mutually exclusive, so I do both. But um, if you are starting off, I would say spend the time on one of those routes whichever one is your priority because like anything if you split your time between two separate things then you're going to make slower progress. So um, just to expand a bit upon how they don't clash they're just two different approaches to playing music. I'll give you a couple of examples. Um, now I learnt um, as a child, I, I did some Beethoven, and one of the most famous Beethoven pieces is Fur Elise. Um, and uh, I'll probably be a bit rusty on this now. <laughs> I haven't played it for a long time, but I'll give you an example of how that, how that sounds. So it's... Uh... So that's the first part of it. Now I learned how to read that from notation and what notation does is specify every note that you need to play and that would sound obvious. Okay, why wouldn't you want to do that? Well, the only downside with that approach is there's quite a lot actually going on there. So you have to read what, what we call the bass clef and you read the, the treble clef and it takes some time to be fluent in those and then you're reading every single note. But what you're never seeing is the pattern. So I've taught people how to play that tune within days uh, rather than weeks or months. And that's from never having 
played piano before. And so the way that I would approach that, if I, if I was going to show somebody how to play that really quickly, is simply look at the patterns. So people who've seen my other, other deck play videos will know that on the piano, there's a wonderfully simple shape that lets you play all the chords. So that shape is play a note, miss one, play one, miss one, play one. So it's what what some, uh, some students call like the claw. So uh, Martin has the, <laughs> has the um, copyright on that phrase. He's the first uh, student who actually came up with that. He, he calls it the claw thing. But that shape, if you start on note C or note one, uh, which you find by finding the two black notes, there's patterns of two and three all the way up the keyboard. You find a pattern of two notes, go one to the left, that is always note one. So it doesn't matter if you're high or low, it's always note one, which is the same as note C. Um, so uh, what you do is you play one, miss one, play one, miss one. So if you count up, just keep that shape and move it, chord one, two, three, four, five, six. So you'll see that that piece of a Beethoven effectively is chord six. So the left hand is, which is the first note of the chord, the middle note of the chord, and then the first note again it is, is repeated higher up. And the left hand simply moves from that shape of first note, five notes up, and the first note again. And it moves from note six to note five, sorry, note three, back to note six. And that's all the left hand does throughout that whole section. The right hand then, so those notes are, the, are two or three notes of the same chord six, and then it goes, which is all notes in the chord six. All it's doing is changing the order of them. So, then, that's note six, then chord three, and it's got one slightly altered note from the standard pop version of chord three, because this is classical music. So you've got chord six, chord three, go back to chord six, and just repeats. And the next section is chord one. So the left hand is doing the exact same shape all the way through. All you're doing is we're changing it to start on a different key. So chord one, chord five, it's back to six, back to three. So the right hand effectively is playing the same notes in the chord with the occasional what we call passing note, but but the structure is very simple. And you'll notice that section B is uses the exact same chords as bucket loads of popular songs. So you've got chord one, five, six, three. So for example, those same chords if you spend your time learning how to play by ear rather than notation, you'll start to spot patterns in between songs that on, on the notation appear to have no link whatsoever. So for example, uh, that use chords one, five, six, and three. So if you were to take an Ed Sheeran song, one, three, four, five, one, three, So that song just uses that sequence of one, three, four, five. Um, so that in itself shows how simple the, the, the patterns within the songs are, but it also so shows how lots of music is connected, even some classical music, which you wouldn't think is connected. So um, that's why playing by ear, I find it a lot more useful because I can learn songs. All I'm thinking about is the chord structure 
and, and the melody on the top. I'm not thinking of every individual note. And it also lets me play with um, freedom of, of, of rhythm. So I'm not reading the actual written down rhythm, which can be quite complicated. So uh, for example, So I'm not thinking. I'm not reading each one of those rhythms. I'm just playing what feels natural, and it's a lot easier, simpler, and it gives me the flexibility to put my own expression into that music. So um, that's a rundown on the question between reading notation or playing by ear. I hope that's been useful and I will see you soon.